So how many of you are here from Ontario? Everybody from Ontario put up their hand. Okay, I'm going to ask everybody from Ontario to put their fork down and stand up. I want everyone from Ontario to put their fork down and stand up. Do you know why you're standing up? You're standing up for solar. And today when you go home, I'm not kidding, it's not a joke. We have a website, www.standupforsolar.ca. Everybody from Ontario, go on that, send a letter to your MPP. Because if you don't do that, you'll be, do, you'll be doing a whole lot of research and have no industry to take it up. So when I tell you to stand up for solar in Ontario, I'm not kidding. I expect each one of you to go onto that website today. I expect you to put other people's names in there and I expect you to make a difference. Thank you. And hopefully we'll have Stand Up for Solar Quebec and Stand Up for Solar British Columbia and Stand Up for Solar right across the country. So you can tell a little bit where my direction is from. And I am not an engineer and I'm not a scientist, I'm actually a librarian. So I can find the answer, but I don't necessarily mean to understand it. So this year, our board, our, in last December at our conference, our board put out a new document called Solar Vision 2025. It's our first attempt at having a kind of vision for the solar industry in Canada and what conditions will create that. Um, it's not perfect. In fact, we expect to keep changing it all the time and it will be very, it will be a lot of how that vision um, goes forward will be depending on the work that you people are doing, what policy makers decide to do, uh, how we work together, and how Canadians see us. But we thought we'd take a first stand. And the great thing about this is that I used to make presentations around the world and show pictures of Germany. And you see all the Germans going, wait a minute, that's just down the road. Mm -hmm. um, but these are actually a microfit pro project in Ontario. And that's a project right near um, Ottawa, actually, which is a solar farm right near Ottawa. So it just, so some things have changed. Let me see if I can do this. So let me little, tell you a little bit about CAMSIA. We're a national trade uh, or association that's been around since 1992. We, every time, every time I make this presentation, we actually have over 700 corporate members. Um, and we represent the solar electric and solar thermal technologies. I'm gonna be talking about PV today, but we do do solar thermal. Our objectives are to strengthen the Canadian solar industry, develop and expand the market, remove market barriers, improve awareness and understanding. So, you might say, well, well why are you here? Um, we can be the interface for you between an industry that's growing rapidly um, and that needs you, uh, because what is going to make the solar industry successful here in Canada and worldwide is what you people can develop in your labs and in your universities. So that's where we meet, and we have to do, from my perspective, we have to do a better job. But I only have eight people working for me, so we sometimes don't work on Saturday nights. <laughs> Sundays we obviously work. <laughs> Basically, what is what was our vision? And this is, our vision is a strong, responsive, and diversified solar industry in Canada which delivers high-value energy solutions as Canadian developed solar products and serves to achieve market competitiveness on a global scale. And what does market competitiveness mean? In PV, that means grid parity for us. And we expect it, we will hit it well before 2025. We just sort of pick that date because, and, and there are a lot of variances that will impact and whether we will achieve it in Canada or not. But just the way the rest of the world is going, we're going to get, I was going to say, we're going to be on that wave, but I'm not here to talk about wave. So, <laughs> um, so that is the goal of the industry, and we repeat it a lot because at the moment, solar is very dependent worldwide on government subsidies. And when you go into government, there's sort of two kinds of people that go in. The people ask for subsidies for now, but plan to go off later, and people who will be there forever. And I think more and more governments are not looking for the people who are going to be there forever. So that's a very important issue to make that statement. What is our energy future? 
well, we believe that solar will be a key component of, of every nation's energy mix. In other words, it will be a diversified mix depending on how people go and the uh, fossil fuels, etc. But we believe the one thing is that solar is ubiquitous and has to be part of everybody's energy future. You all know this, but it's always important to do this. I'm sure some of you have heard me speak before, I've heard me do this. I used to have a picture of a polar bear in there because uh, I've had two pictures that I bring to Europe. One is of a polar bear <coughs> in the sun to prove that Canada has sun. And the other one is Wayne Gretzky. And the reason I use Wayne Gretzky is because the solar energy, the reason I joined this industry and the reason I'm passionate about it is it's where the puck will be, not where it's been. And that's a really important thing for all of us to remember. But I'm sure you know all of this. And we're hoping there's going to be a program in Saskatchewan soon. <laughs> but as you can see, you're better to have solar in Newfoundland than you are in Germany. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the, what we deal with. The residential solar PV rooftop, commercial rooftop solar PV and large-scale solar PV, commonly known as solar farms. So Ontario is making headlines, and I think you people have to realize that because you've got a large presence from Ontario, so a lot of companies coming into Ontario. There's a big opportunity here. So we're making headlines. We're ranked at the top of the North American market. You can see we're now second in place in 2010, right behind California. In other words, Ontario is the California of Canada. Isn't that a surprise? Particularly today. <laughs> or yesterday. This industry's development is at a pivotal point. We've made remarkable gains in a relatively short period of time. We've brought significant job growth and industrial development. And there appears to be boundless opportunity coupled with uncertainty. Um, and one of the things I'd like to say to all of you is I was looking at the list of some of the companies that are supporting you, and I'd like to sit down with your board people at some time and say, there are way more companies in now. There's a whole lot of people who don't know you're here that are interested in innovation. There are companies like Silfab who came in from Italy. They've just opened a very nice plant in Mississauga. And we need to get you to know those people and them to know about you because they want to invest in innovation as well that works in the North American marketplace perhaps better than in the European or whatever. This is uh, the largest uh, solar PV project in Ontario. It's the largest one in the world actually, which is the what was first solar and then bought by Enbridge, and it's in Sarnia. We, Canada has is, is a reputation as an energy superpower, but not necessarily in renewables. But um, as you can see here, with our total installed capacity rising, we're starting to be known in the renewable world as well, in the solar world. So for a long time, we weren't there. Everybody was always talking about the United States. And then all of a sudden, Ontario, and we're leaping ahead of being right after California is very significant. But we lag behind other countries. You can talk about a province, but the reality is we lag behind other countries. Germany has the feed-in tower, ta tariff program. The United States has the National Investment Tax Credit and regional's RPSs. China has rebates and regional feed-in tariffs. The United Kingdom has a national feed-in tariff that they play with all the time and are making their people crazy. We just had a conference in Windsor last week, and there were quite a number of Brits there who have been burned very badly by the changes, very rapid changes. Italy has a national feed-in tariff program. Um, I never know this. We never put Spain on here because we never know the status. <clears throat> and Canada, what we really have is Ontario's feed-in tariff program and then some very aggressive work going on with some municipalities like Edmonton, Medicine Hat, Vancouver, and places like that. Uh, so we see those. And um, as there's been some, some work in Saskatchewan, and they are now looking at putting a program in there. Excuse me? Yes? Is Japan not on there? Uh, I just think we ran out. Uh, but Jeff, yeah, Japan has. We're just giving you 
some key support mechanisms. And Japan is about is changing their program now and increasing it. So without all of that settled in, uh, we didn't put it in. The key to market competitiveness is cost. And so as you are doing your research, because it's great to do the research you're doing, but what's going to happen with it when you're finished? What's the industry looking for? What's going to sell your idea? One of the keys is cost. And when you see we have two scenarios, the reason is when we end, and, and uh, Solar Vision is available on our website, we put in various scenarios in the Canadian experience how aggressive government uh, programs to support us would be to get us to grid parity or competitiveness, or if they weren't the yellow or low scenario. So we, we actually offer that, you can look at it, and I guess we'll be looking back and seeing what that means. So cost is key. When I go to meet, and, and when you look at governments the developing project, they all are looking at cost. So driving that cost down is number one. See our target, and then again we have an historical where we could be, a base case of where we could be, a conservative case, which we made red just to be smart and an aggressive case, which is green, of course. So this is where we could be depending on what kind of support we get, what kind of commitment we get um, from both the federal and provincial governments and cities as well. We look at escalating energy demand, and so this is our focus of what we see because we see solar playing mostly in the new energy demand. Um, so in, in a lot of cases we think it'll be new energy demand. Uh, now one of the things is that when we started working on this we did not have, I mean did not expect the huge gro uh, growth in the cost of uh, gasoline and uh, petroleum products and that does have an impact on how people look at renewable energy, uh, how they're going to do that so that they, you know, there's less pressure and you can still drive your cars, what kind of cars you're going to be driving. But no, nobody projected, we were working with Ernst & Young, the, the leap that we've seen lately. Um, it's very important to know the case for solar power. And this might, to all of you, this might just seem really boring. Why is this woman getting up and telling graduate students and professors and all of you what the case is for solar. I think it's important that as we talk we need to understand people going well what's the difference between solar and wind? Why would I want solar? What difference does it make? Etc. The big thing is because don't forget you're using public money to grow this industry and then once you become market competitive then we're really out there. So what's the sales case? And the sales case is, first of all, it's a peaking power. So solar is there when consumers need it. And many people don't understand it until you think about it. I was looking at the IESOs. They have some um, work on projections where they were using wind. And the difference, you all know, this wind looks like somebody took a can of Chef Boyardee and threw it at that. At that and, and solar goes up and down. It does not produce in the evenings, etc. So that's really where we think we play a role. And, you know, we know there are baseload issues, but as, you know, we're going to see changes there as, as more and more places go off coal. And so inter intermediate, that's where wind fits in. But solar really fits into those peak times when you need it. And it's really important to get down to that simple because people really don't know very much. So here's some information, it's cost competitive, solar is cost competitive at those peak periods. So we're already getting closer and closer to what will make us competitive. But for example, if solar, if there had been as much solar available, um, last, last June at the end of June they had a uh, power outage in Toronto and as it happened the Queen was there and as happened they had all of that area in downtown Toronto. If all of the solar installations that had contracts from the OPA had been hooked up, it wouldn't have happened. So it's really important to look at that time of day. So that makes us up where peak prices 
we're there and we can be, uh, have to be a part of the mix. So we, the other thing is, of course, the case for solar power is, it's an opportunity to derive economic development and excellent export potential. So what does she mean? We're going to be selling electricity to the states. We've been doing that forever. So we're going to keep doing that. Uh, but what the other things we are doing is, through some of the activities in the program, solar is the, te the renewable technology that creates the most jobs in terms of manufacturing, in terms of installing, all of that. Solar creates the most jobs, and it is the only renewable whose prices are only energy prices that seems to be going down rapidly. So it has two things going for it. When Ontario put in its feed in tariff program, it included a 60% domestic content. And there was a lot of panic because it's a very rich feed in tariff program, but where are we going to get all those modules? Where are we going to get all those inverters? Well, I was just talking to someone and saying that I'm out of, almost out of Ottawa all the time because I'm going to the opening of those plants, whether it's Silicon in Windsor, Silfat in Mississauga, or SMA with Celestica, or any of those. And these people are creating jobs, they're creating well-paying well jobs, training jobs, and they're also looking to work with all of you to develop innovation because they want to stay ahead of the market. So their jobs are being created, and we were worried, of course, we thought the European, the European, um, <clears throat> uh, the EU was going to go after us, and there was some question of that. And last week, the Italian feed and tariff program came out with a revision, and it has 60% EU product in it. So just remember, as you're looking at what you're developing, where people will be sourcing some of their material. That's going to become important. Part. Solar is the most expensive of the renewables, even though our price is going down, but it creates jobs. And governments are desperate to create jobs. Um, so I have spent more time in meetings about tracing silicon, Ontario-based silicon and that sort of stuff. And I'm not, it's just, it's whether economists would agree this is the way to create a market, it is what people are choosing in times when there has been job loss and you have to re recreate in places like Windsor. We had a conference in Windsor last week. It's amazing how many former automotive plants have been taken over for solar. Um, and how many people from the automotive industry, or as one of the guys calls them, steel vendors, uh, have, come into, have come into the solar industry. So there's a real meeting of places. And if you're looking for support either to develop innovation or to work with industry, then obviously you have to think about this. But the other thing I think we'll be looking at is where are we sourcing material, which you know more and more may become an issue. Uh, but certainly, and most of the companies that are coming from Europe and Germany, they're hiring Canadians, and their focus is to use the road from Canada into the U.S. Um, and to supply some of those states um, because it's actually in many ways cheaper for companies to come to Canada because of our healthcare system and a whole lot of other things than it is to. Uh, to, to set up in the U.S. So this is where we see jobs coming from and we do see 10% in research. We see other, which is all of the associated jobs. Installing still remains key. Because that's something, and when you see people doing large solar farms, if you see what's happened in Europe, is often people work on that, then go and create their local company and become the local installer. But they've, they've actually learned doing large solar farms. And production is both, so it's, it's quite significant. So we see ourselves at 30,000 in 2025. I don't see us catching up to the Germans who are somewhere around 80,000, but it would be nice. But still, that will make a big difference. All these studies are on our website as well. Solar's contribution to Canada, we would achieve market competitiveness. We would then see ourselves removed from government incentives and established as a key component of Canada's energy mix. We would see ourselves with 35,000 jobs and displacing 15 to 31 million tons of greenhouse gas emissions per year. So we would provide a cleaner environment for the generations to come. We would create economic activity, and we'd be working on innovation to do that. 
because again, to reach market competitiveness, we have to keep our prices down and our efficiency up. So you may want to download Solar Revision 2025, and it's there, and you can see it. There's one of our projects from BC, one from here, the one in the, it's, it's quite an interesting document. It's not over, it's just the beginning, but at least we have something to say. So let me tell you a little bit, uh, I'll let you ask me some questions. So that's Solar Vision 2025. Um, but right now we're doing a lot of other things. What we do is we spend a lot of time caught between the government and the industry. And right now in Ontario, that's really important. When I ask people from Ontario to stand up, the future of your programs and your future jobs will be affected by what happens in the next election. And for whatever reason, energy has become a football in all of it. Uh, as you should know, renewables are not what's making the price of your electricity bill go up. There's a whole lot of other reasons to do it, and we're trying to get people mobilized. We have people in, in here now, in this province, with new investment, looking at the rest of, of the country, hoping to see solar grow, um, and concerned that the, the province that they've been attached to is. So that's what Stand Up for Solar is about, and get your friends involved in all of it, because you want to get jobs. I have two sons who just graduated from university. I certainly wanted them to get jobs, so I'm sure your parents want you to get jobs. Trust me. And so, um, but what else does CANSIA do? We do provide information to our members, um, and we have job sites, and we're going to enrich that. We um, have an annual conference that last year attracted 4,000 people. I think when I started, it was 450 and that was considered wild and huge. Uh, we'll again be in Toronto um, and I want to now start developing a better, um, a better liaison between the research community and the manufacturing community in our, and so we're looking at how we do that and how we can um, put the, make that as part of the program and create the relationships you need with the various companies that are coming in and are looking at investing in this country, in solar, because those are the people who will be partnering with the academic institutions as well if you have interesting proposals to make, and they should. Certainly, I know that innovation is a key, um, is key for governments as well, and so we're looking more on that side uh, to see what we can do. Um, we have regional caucuses across the country, and uh, so we're not just about Ontario, but it's pretty hard to ignore Ontario right now. But for example, they're doing round tables in Saskatchewan and we're a part of that. We're in discussions with the BC government who seems to want some new renewable technology to add a feed-in tariff to that nobody's ever thought of. And it's not solar and it's not wind, it's not tidal, so we don't know what it is. Uh, <laughs> interesting feed-in tariff. Um, so we're trying to set that right doing that sort of thing. Um, we're happy to do what we can to introduce you to the new manufacturers who come in. They become a big part of CANSIA. They're very interesting. Many of them are from other places, but they hire locally. Mm -hmm. They're very interested in hiring locally. And so, and, and obviously efficiency and getting the cost down is really key. Um, so you can follow us on Twitter. You can see us on Facebook and you can look at us for Stand Up For Solar as well. This is just Can't See Itself, uh, but we also Stand Up For Solar, so I'm expecting all of, at least the students here to do it. Uh, or I wouldn't have come here on a Sunday. It's not true. Uh, but anyway. So does anybody have any questions? Yes? You were talking about feeding tariffs in provinces. Uh, can we expect at any time soon a feeding tariff? But Whole I doubt it because Canada's electricity um, management of electricity is province by province and um, each each province has a different way of managing that so in some places a feed-in tariff might make sense but for example in Alberta it wouldn't probably wouldn't in Quebec either because the cost of electricity is so low that the span be so high and and the availability of hydropower makes it not a problem in the long run, but no, I don't expect to see that. But I could see the federal government uh, providing or reviewing their tax 
code to get rid of things that are not favorable to renewables because, uh, or at least giving a level playing field between renewables and uh, petroleum and others. Yes. Hey, uh, Michael Thomas from the University of Alberta and the National Institute of Technology. Also, I'm actually originally from Germany, so I like your little graphs about Germany and Canada. Most people don't actually see that. Um, my question is, do you advocate more distributed power generation or large-scale power generation for PV, or do you leave that to the market? Um, I leave it to the market because uh, it depends. Um, I think in most cases, large-scale distributed solar farms bring in the market activity quickly, but that doesn't always suit. For example, in discussions in Saskatchewan, you're sitting there saying, so do you want solar panels or do you want wheat? I mean, that's a real... <laughs> um, the other thing that's interesting is I think that uh, the rooftop market, both for uh, industrial and residential, is very attractive for a lot of reasons. Businesses adopt it in some cases, not because there is an incentive, but because that actually the more green you're perceived, then your um, consumer base increases. And residential, it's, I mean, there's a lot of residential PV in Alberta because people are just want to be, you know, uh, independent. And, you know, where, and in Ontario, the take up for the microfit has been so incredible, it's just choked up places at the OPA, the Ontario Power Authority. So we let the market drive. There's some things that we bring forward and say, if you want this, then this is what you should do. Um, we, for example, never foresee that there'll be ground mount, huge, huge amounts of ground mount solar in, in BC. It just doesn't make sense in that market. Can I ask a second question? Sure. Um, you said that solar creates a lot of jobs, and you showed that specifically in the field of installation. And when you actually look at installing a solar PV thing on your roof, um, you'll see that most of the costs you actually have is from installation labor costs. They're huge. So it might actually be a uh, problem for the industry that it creates so many jobs specifically in the field of insulation because that means productivity is quite low, especially in that field. Well, I think we're starting to see some different business models come out. Um, NMAX in Calgary has a sort of a, what we call an aggregation model. And so that way they have a team of installers that are kept busy by doing that. Um, we have aggregators in Ontario that the Ontario government can't wrap their mind around. Uh, but it because they never thought of that as a model, but it really does make a lot. It make, make, create, creates more efficiency in installation, um, actually from a, from an insurance point of view and safety point of view. These people have to because of who they're they end up sort of competing with some of the larger companies uh, because of the monies involved in it and that sort of thing. So I think we'll see that move. I think we do have to be careful not to be, I mean, in some cases, I think your local installer is still going to be very important. Um, Mike from Ottawa Solar here is an incredible guy, does a great job, and I think I'd have him do it for me. Um, I mean, there's some really good people in that. Right now, because of the program in Ontario, we have more cowboys, though. Um, they don't generally belong to the association because you have to uh, sign a code of ethics, and they won't. So. My first question is always, do you, does this company belong to an association? But from a, you know, from a consumer point of view, there, there are that, those issues. I'm sure, well, maybe not in Germany, but in other places, you know, maybe you didn't. But I think we're really seeing a lot of that kind of thing. So I'm hoping the market will take care of it. Yes? What is the percentage of cost that goes into the installation and the product itself for the gold installation? It can be up to 70%. So your solar panels are like from a third to a half of the installation. And it depends. Yeah. It depends on the, I mean, there's some of the technologies. The technology's changing so much. Um, you know, it depends. The other thing is that one of the things we've noticed, and this will go right across from the people doing the solar farms to people who have been solar installers for years, et cetera. The more active you are, the more efficient you get. And so, better price you get for the installation. Uh, so the first solar farm that EDFEN put in uh, on the Galetta Road here, I mean, they really had to bring people from outside to work with this construction company. Now that construction company is now building 
for recurrent, for EDF, and it's a few others in this area because they know what they're doing, it goes much faster, all of that sort of thing. The same is true with uh, uh, even doing uh, residential work. Once you, you know, I mean, it used to be kind of a off-grid sort of thing that people did so there wasn't that much experience. Now there's real demand, um, and so that's really meaning that uh, employers have to train people and have to really stay on it to gain the efficiencies. You mentioned that in the UK they were playing with the fit, uh, hitting tariff, and it was causing a lot of headaches. What's the risk of that happening here? <laughs> <laughs> Regardless of what government is in power right now, <laughs> uh, there will be a review of the feed-in tariff and there will be a digression of price. Uh, we have the highest feed-in tariff in the world right now. So, at, at, And what happened was two things. The tariff itself, tariffs, because there's five of them were high, and the Canadian dollar is high. So those two things came together to make it very rich. So there will be digression in the price. Um, and I think we may adopt a German uh, approach. I'm, I think that's what we'll recommend where it's fairly automatic and transparent and all of that sort of thing. Uh, Mr. Hudak, the head of the Progressive Conservative Party last week, made a speech about what he thought he would do. Um, and he just said he would, number one, close the Samsung deal. And I don't know very much about it, but I think it is a written deal between Samsung and the Canadian government. Um, and for some reason, he doesn't understand that, you know, we got seven and a half million, or was it billion or whatever, billion dollars of investment, and so far only about 458. Um, I'm trying to remember the numbers, but the number is the differential. I'm going to, I was going to guess, and I'm going to stop that. But I know that the, the amount of money that has is coming to Canada from Korea versus what will go back. It's a better deal for Ontario, and they did need to have somebody big come in and do that kind of investment. You know, I guess if I had, to, if I had been the Premier of Ontario, I would have done it competitively, because I think there are other companies like Mitsubishi and some European companies that could have come in, and that would have been interesting, but you know, it's really difficult to change the past. Um, he also said he would get rid of the fit program. I don't know if I, and, and he's going to have competitive procurement. I don't think he's wrapped his mind around all the microfit people, and I don't think they're going to do competitive procurement at all. And you may be able to do that for the ground mount or large scale, um, have some competitive <coughs> procurement at that end, but I'm not sure it'll work. Um, and he prefers hydropower, and hydropower is a role to play, but it's now further away. It's not it's, it's not as it used to be in the first, you know, in its first infancy. It doesn't create the economic activity and it's expensive. I think nuclear will always be part of the base load in Ontario. Um, but there will be concerns about how much that will grow, et cetera. I mean, I just, after everything that's happened in Japan, we just are letting the universe unroll. From our perspective, we look not very responsible to be critical in a situation where there's been loss of life, et cetera, but obviously that has had an impact on countries around the world. But, uh, so I don't know who's going to win the election in October. <clears throat> I'd really like you to stand up for solar. <laughs> and that's a non-political advocacy that we're trying to do at the grassroots to really make people aware because we've done a lot of polling uh, we just did some in March, actually, but it was about three weeks after the J uh, Japan tragedy. So, you know, there's a realization, Ontarians, that you need to have a, a base load of nuclear to some degree, but really anxious to see uh, more renewables in the mix. Um, and but there's a lot of playing right now. So we have a grassroots with Stand Up for Solar, and we're looking at doing um, a program that would be also positive, not negative, that will promote solar to inform more people around the province over the next few months. Any other questions? Well, can we really compare uh, solar in Ontario, in Germany, and in, uh, in, uh, in California? I mean, as long as it is about numbers like uh, watts or uh, kilowatt hour or numbers like dollar because oil is a commodity that's doable. But uh, 
it's, it's almost obvious that the technology has to be a little bit different because the uh, sun is not shining the same way in California and in Ontario. The real estate is not uh, as much cloudy in Ontario than it is in Germany. So certainly there are differences that, we make, uh, uh, that, that can induce a change in the technology that we have to adopt in Canada to make it happen. We, 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 we will not necessarily use the same technology. For instance, uh, I, I don't mean that solar concentrators are bad, but uh, they will be less useful in Ontario than in California simply because the direct sun is shining uh, a little bit less often in, uh, in, in Ontario than in, uh, than in California. So, uh, I mean, well, I think the reason is, you, really oh, you, there's no question, each market is different. Each market has its own, uh, its own unique aspects to it. Um, but I think the truth is that Germany has used solar as one of the, or renewables, as a lever to uh, change its energy mix and to create jobs. Um, and Ontario decided to do the same thing. California, to some extent, you're absolutely right. I don't see, nobody, hardly anyone talks to us about concentrated solar power or whatever, or sees it as a technology we would sell elsewhere. Um, but I think the reason we do it is we're trying to, to awaken the people who make decisions that, that can make the industry grow and make the technology available, that there are opportunities. That's no way, I've never gone and said to anyone that I thought California and Ontario were alike. I mean, I jokingly call Ontario the California of Canada. But the truth, I mean, because we've invested in the technology, but not in the same way as California. Uh, and indeed, there may be things that we can do in this province and this country that will help more northern countries uh, adopt solar, be more efficient, you know, and, and certainly where we're in a situation where um, uh, being able to store is, is going to be very important and that sort of thing. But, but there are success stories. And if we don't do that, then you really want to... You want to do research and have that research have an impact. And so to do that, you've got to make sure that people understand this is a good news story. This is a good news story that people want. It's about a clean environment. And that's really important. When we did our, uh, when we did our polling through Ontario, uh, the clean environment and health aspects are really important. And really important to the population. Um, and then we found that men over 35 are mostly worried about the price. So we'll have to do something about that to convince them the price is going down. But generally the support for this technology is very high. So how do we make it available? How do we inform people? How do we make sure it's there? How do we make sure that the research that you're doing in your centers is, being, is going to the private sector, whether it's here or going in other places? I think University of Ottawa is doing some testing for Morgan Solar, I think. You were saying, and Morgan Solar probably will sell most of that technology out of Ontario, out of Canada. It, it does use concentrated solar power and small uh, PV panels, and, and I shouldn't be going even that far. Um, but, you know, and, and they're being supported by, by your network, by people in, in your network, by the Ontario government, by the government of Canada. So, yeah, I mean, you're right. But what it does say is there are opportunities to be part of a marketplace and to do some technology. Are there any other questions? Yes. Uh, what about, um, I've seen there's several certification programs for installers and solar providers. For example, in Germany there's, I'm sure one, there's one in the US. I haven't seen a federal certification in Canada. Is that, is that coming or is that even relevant? Or are there different ways of dealing with that? <coughs> Certification for PV installers is really tough. It's very expensive. We tried to do some work with NAPSEC and to try to develop something that was Canadian and they didn't really want to do that. There are a lot of players in that marketplace. Uh, I would say that the unions are more involved and it will be province by province, unfortunately. It shouldn't be. I'm involved, um, I'm also, I'm on the board of the um, HRSDC has these um, um, sector councils, I'm on the board of the Electricity Sector Council, we've done a lot of work to develop it, we've actually developed curriculum that would help the community colleges, etc., and that's being used. 
but uh, one of the problems of the gold rush in Ontario is that there are a lot of players that shouldn't be in it and the unions are bigger. We talk to them. The unions and contract uh, contractors are bigger. We talk to them. We're the voice of the individual people. We're trying to work on it. But I don't see us doing it in particular. So there's a lot of liability associated with it. Any other questions? Right on, on the ball. So we, you're talking a little bit about the potential volatility of the FIT program. And have you seen a significant impact of, of that obstacle for industries to come into Ontario so far? That's a good question. <laughs> Would you like to come and answer my phone every day? Um, it's hard to say who might not be coming to Ontario because of the volatility around it because there are a lot of players coming into Ontario. I said we just we had what we considered a just regional conference last week in Windsor. We had 750 people. We took up the biggest space we could. We did all that stuff and we could have had more people. So I mean I also think we may be getting we took a big bite with the FIT program and regardless of what happens that bite has to be swallowed. Um, so I think there's some of that. It's a little late to come in now before the pro. I think people will wait before the program review more than anything. See where the prices will go. That, that's what I think. I'm, uh, we've done some work with Navigant on the prices and where we think they're going uh, and what the ranges are. But there are other issues, whether there should be other steps in that program, whether it should be managed in different ways. It's a very lumpy program. It kind of like was talking to Wes, who isn't here, but he's part of the board. And FIT reminds me of a python. You know, they just lie there in the sun. Okay, so just think of them lying there in the sun, and then a whole, like, hundreds of complicated ap applications come, and they take a big swallow, and there's a big lump. <laughs> That's the Ontario Power Authority. So it moves through the Ontario Power Authority. It's another big lump. That's the REA process. So it goes on and on like that. So I, I, I would really hope there would be ways to smooth it out. They're going to make some more big announcements on um, C, uh, CAE, you know, as those co connection allocation exempt projects, which really aren't connection exempt, but are in their, tent, in their words. And that'll be a big lump of projects, and then they'll make some other announcements in June before they close down the program with the review. So getting out the lumpiness would be better for everyone. I mean, it certainly gives trade associations lots to do to talk about what's wrong with all these processes, but you know, you don't need an MBA to figure out if you're always just feeding the, the Python in big, big huge amounts, you're just gonna get a lumpy program. Are there any other questions? Yes? And you mentioned that um, Sixty percent of the materials that go into solar installations in Ontario need to be have been produced in Ontario. And you also mentioned that there are a number of companies, international companies, that are coming to Ontario. Is there any concern about the economics um, and profitability and kind of leaving Ontario? Like, yes, there'll be job creation, but um, in terms of well, I think most of the most of the companies that have come. First of all, sixty percent Ontario content, and that includes some labor. It's a very complicated graph. It's on the Ontario Power Authority's uh, FIT uh, website. And, and I mean, it's very, very precise. Um, and uh, including what percentage of, of people working on projects down to engineers and everything are from Ontario, live in Ontario, pay taxes in Ontario. Um, so I think that, um, but what's happening is we're creating a marketplace, and that marketplace will respond. Uh, you know, unless they drop the fit pro into to a level that nobody else in this world has, and it's even lower than Australia, New South Wales, then you know, then we won't. But I, I don't think they intend to do that, and uh, so they will have to be competitive to the market. Uh, with all of that, but I'm just saying, I'm just you know, I would have told you a year ago I didn't think what was what has happened would happen, but the uh, Italians just came out with 60% EU, so I suspect we're going to see that in EU as well. So I see I'm getting the hook. <laughs> so I'd like to uh, ask all of you to to uh, join me in thanking Elizabeth for this. Episode.